to preach this sermon to you like I heard it, okay? Because when I heard it, if there was a baby in my belly, it would have leapt for joy just like Elizabeth when John was in her belly and Mary came to their house. Remember that? And at the very sound of Mary's voice, John in her belly was like, oh, what's going on? Somebody walked in the room. Amen. So that's how I felt sitting at work when I heard this very message. And this is the prophetic word given to Jerry Savelle. And I am going to give it to you. God said, if you will not be moved by all the chaos and disorder that is happening in the world around you, then I will says God, arrange for you to experience supernatural, extraordinary, and unusual provision. God said, I will open my hand unto you. Now, remember at the very beginning, before they started saying that it was rations out here in the world, remember I told you a couple of months ago I had a dream about myself, Pastor Kevin, Tiffin, Minister Tiffany, and Emmanuel. We were all in the grocery store. Remember that? I had gone in the grocery store. I, I tell this over Facebook Live, so let me just tell it again because you might have been moving around. All right. In the dream, I had gone into the store to meet Tiffany for something. And when I went in the store, I said, let me do my grocery shopping. Let me get what I needed. I needed some meat. So I went back to the meat department, and there was none. And I began to, like, notice, and I looked around, and the shelves were bare, especially where the meat was. There was no meat. Like, you know how you just say meat? There was really no meat there. And I remember the man was like, well, we just unstocked some, we just put up, you know, some stuff. So go back there and look. He said, look. So I kind of paid attention to what he said when he said, look, because it was not apparent to the naked eye. I had to, you know, when you go into the meat, like say where the ground beef is. Okay, you know, it's just usually stacking there. And where the ground beef is, that's not where the bacon is, right? The bacon is in another section. But what was there where the ground beef and the steak should be was bacon. But the bacon was in pack, uh, you know, in the, the thing that it comes in, way pushed up in the back of the thing with something kind of leaned up over it where you really couldn't see that it was bacon there. I had to really look to see what was there, because I'm thinking to myself, is this man crazy? He just said that they got a, a truckload of food. Where's the food? But this man was talking about this hidden bacon, okay, that was there. Now, you might say, okay, bacon is swine. The Lord says, we're not going there. Bacon tastes good, all right? Bless the Lord. If he told you not to eat it, don't eat it. But I like it, okay? And you don't have to overindulge on it because it's not that good for you. Okay, don't overindulge on anything. It's okay, it's the point. All right. But anyway, how befitting. Because remember when in, in the Bible when um Paul was up there talking, not Paul, what man, uh Peter was talking to them and he was like, Oh God, I'm not you're not supposed to eat um uh, um uh, you know, all the hoofed what is it, the four hoofed, whatever it is, the food that was like this, that had a hoof in it like this. Was they weren't supposed to eat. Split hoof, thank you. But then Peter falls asleep and God tells him, do not call what I have called sanctified. He was like, don't do that. Don't do it. And don't lead these people astray with your foolishness. He said, what I have said is set apart and sanctified. That's a done deal. So don't tell them that they can't have it. Amen. All right. So, and as I said, how befitting, we were talking about bacon. Amen. Anyway, so the hand of God usually represents provision. When you see that in the Bible, it repre represents provision. The, and the right hand of God is usually symbolic of his dominion and his authority and his power. 
So when you wake up every day, this is what you need to say. And this is based on the prophetic word that was given to Jerry Seville. Say, Lord, I'm expecting to experience your open hand today. Supernatural provision is coming my way. Hallelujah. Let me say that again so you can write it down or you can go back and watch it. Say every day when you wake up, when your eyeballs open or when you hit the, your feet hit the floor, say, Lord, I'm expecting to experience your hand today. Supernatural provision is coming my way. Hallelujah. So let's repeat that. Lord, I'm expecting to experience your hand today. Supernatural provision is coming my way. Hallelujah. So let's make a habit of saying that every day. And we're doing that according to Job 22, verse 28. Because what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Job 22, verse 28 says that when you declare a thing or declare a matter, that it will be what? Established, not just raggedy done. Established means that it's put up, put set apart. It's right there for you, okay? It will be established unto you. Does it say unto your neighbor? Unto you. So that's why it's good to declare these things every day out of your mouth. Now, only declare this if you need supernatural provision. And I know that when you're thinking of supernatural provision, you're thinking of finance. But that means financially, socially, physically, social, anything in your life. The peace which pass out, the, a day at school, whatever it is. God has supernatural provision for you. Even at your job, promotion, whatever it is. The health of your body. Psalm 78, verse 41 through 42. And read that in the King James Version. Psalm 78, verse 41 through 42. And it reads that they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Say, if he did it before, he can do it again. Now, you might say, why are we saying that? Well, it says here that the Israelites, and if you don't know about them, go read what they did, okay? It says that they tempted God, so they, pro um, they provoked him, they annoyed him, and they limited what he was able to do for them because they did not remember. They didn't remember what he had done. So, Unlimit an unlimited God can be limited by his own people because the Israelites were his people, right? They were his set apart people. So we can limit the things that God can do for us. He wants to, he, if he has a cattle on a thousand hills, we can limit him being able to give that into our hands. Okay. But I am endeavoring to preach this sermon to you so that for these next couple of months, you receive what he has to give. Amen? And I don't want you to look for it in, in certain ways. And I'm going to give you a testimony on this. I haven't had a credit card since I was in college because I abused them. You know, back in the day, this, this doesn't apply to y'all, but back in the day, and I, when I say y'all, the teenagers, Anybody could get a credit card, okay? When I went to college, it was like, come, come get some. It was out on the quad. They were giving out hot dogs and potato chips and uh, T-shirts and uh, uh, popcorn and uh, uh, anything you want. They were like, you want a credit card? Come, 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 come. Sign your name right here, and you can have $5,000. Dude, get it. You had the job the first. But anyway, to pay the thing back. So I... Yes, I did, because I wanted the T-shirt. They were cute. I wanted the pizza and the popcorn and the whatever that was free. Yeah, yeah free. But so I signed up for mm, a lot of them. So when they came to me, I did what? I used them. And my mom was like, okay, Kendra, use them for emergencies. 
So what did I think an emergency was? Well, it's Friday night, and there the alphas are having a party, so that is an emergency. I need some new boots. So I would go to the limited and charge it, okay? Y'all might not even know what the limited is. It's probably old now. Say like uh, H&M or Banana Republic or somewhere, J. Crew, whatever. Okay, know those stores? All right, go charge it. So every time it was a party, oh, it's homecoming. I need homecoming week outfits. Charge it. That's an emergency. Anything was an emergency. So if you look at my, oh, we are hungry. And, you know, I was a kid. I didn't want just McDonald's. We want Red Lobster. So that's a, that was a, hey, charge it. So we were eating like high off the hog in college, okay, off these good credit cards. Now, I wasn't buying other people's stuff. Now, you was buying my own stuff. But so I abused them. So my mom paid the cards off, which was a blessing because I didn't have not a dollar. Anyway, so she paid them off. She pay, and they, they had some balances, boy, because the cards were like $5,000, $2,500, like back then. So she paid them all off, blessings. Thank you, Mommy. Mwah and cut them up. Not, you know, we didn't think she'll need a card in the future. So because I abused those things, and then on top of that, I got student, you know, from Meharry student loans, well, it kind of shot my credit, all right? So then as an adult, I could not get a credit card to save my life. I would be, they'd be like, mm, you don't have any credit. You don't have any credit. Not that it was bad. I didn't have any credit, right? Because she cut up all the cards. And everything that I, of course, the cards were not in my name. I didn't have any money for a car. We even had a gas credit card. It wasn't in my name either. They, it, all the things were in their name, so I had no credit when it was time. So long story short, me at the age of what right now, 40, or what am I, 42, I tried like two years ago to get a credit card, and they were like, there's no credit. You, you don't have any credit. And by this time, it was building up because, you know, Tiffany was trying to help me out. She put me on one of her credit cards, you know, just still building up. Well, I don't know what happened because I'm talking about provision here. All of a sudden, I had that, that dream that I just told you about, and I said to Tomasa, she said, the Lord is giving you, the interpretation of what the dream was, he is giving you provision, but it's provision in a, in a way that is, that you're not really looking for it. So I said, okay, Lord. And she said, it's, pro it, it's, it's, it's a strange provision. So then what I did was I said, all right, Lord, you, 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 you talking about provision. And I know this is going to sound crazy when I say this to you, but she was like the provision. Oh, because in the dream, sorry, in the dream, I told Kevin to use the Apple credit card is what I said to him. Use the Apple credit card to pay for the groceries. So, she, so in the interpretation, she was like, the Lord is giving you credit cards. I said, that ain't no provision. That means you got to pay that stuff back. That is not provision. But mind you, what did I just say? Previously, I couldn't get not one. So I said, all right, Lord, if this is what you said. So that, I think the next day, out of nowhere, I started getting these credit card things for um started getting these um offerings in the mail and i applied to it and it ding back oh nine thousand dollars i said whoa wait a minute jesus nine thousand dollars i applied for another one five thousand dollars applied for another one five fifty two hundred i mean just it was y'all now no i haven't used them all and ran them no i haven't done that but there, it was, it's provision for when I need, because if he's saying that I need it, there is something coming down the line that I'm going to need to use it for. So I have to have the provision there. And you might be saying in the natural, that is not provision. Well, if my God gave it to me and said it is provision, who am I to tell him that it's not? Because I can't see ahead. I can't see what is up. And I don't mean ahead that, that we won't have enough, but it may be something I need to buy or purchase because I need the credit, right? Right. So Psalm 78 tells us that there are, that um, there, there are ways that we can limit God. And if you go and just read through Psalm 78, you can see how the Israelites limited him. 
every time they were murmuring about everything. They were like, oh, God, we're hungry. You brought us out here. We're going to starve. What did he do? He gave them bread and quail. He was like, oh, God, we're so thirsty. We're going to, our throats are dry. Oh, God, we're going to die of thirst. What did he do? There was a brook there that was, um, it had bitter water. He said, touch it, and the water was made sweet. First of all, where you get sweet water from anyway? But and not only did he give them just regular water, but he sweetened the water for them. And that just reminds me of like when my dad wants to do things for me, my, my father here on earth wants to do things. And I say, no, daddy, no. And he's like, take, 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 take the money. Let, let, let me bless you. Cause it's, because it's a blessing for him to be able to give because when he gives, he gets more. Okay. So just think about the children of Israel. And all the challenges they had. And God took care of them every single time. And when another challenge would come up, here they go again. Well, what's he going to do? We out here dying. We out here murmuring. We out here thirsty. We thirsty. Mm, my throat is thirsty. I mean, th that is what they did continually again and again and again. And if you read in Psalm 78, it says in the very beginning of that psalm, go back and read it at home, okay? And when I say go back and read it at home, really go back and read it at home because it will bless you. And you will see how God says in the very beginning of that psalm, he tells the Israelites to remember what he's done. Not only remember what he's done, but to tell his kid, tell their kids what he's done and tell their kids' kids what he has done. Why? So that he's not limited when it's time to bring the provision. That was the whole point. They didn't understand that then. They just maybe thought he was trying to be bossy maybe or trying to be braggadocious. But God is saying, remember what he's done because if he's did it before, he can do it again. And just think of the simple things he did for the Israelites. They were thirsty. He gave them water. Nowadays, we don't have to worry about being thirsty, right? It's water around here everywhere. So God has, is, is, is saying, remember the little things so that you don't restrict him when it's time for the big things. Amen? And I'm coming to... So sometimes we tend to forget what he did last time. We get focused on what's happening right now instead of stopping and thinking, hey, he delivered me from whatever the last time. He helped me with whatever the last time, and he'll do it this time. So God is saying if you put yourself into remembrance when it's time for the provision to come or when it's time for you to get the direction to do whatever it is you need to do to receive the provision, it won't be a struggle. It won't be a problem. It, it won't be. Because this, remember who wants you to forget? Satan. He wants you to forget. Because if you, because if you forget, then he wins. Because what are you going to end up doing? Being depressed, being sorrowful, wandering around, ha not having enough. That's what he wants you to do. He always wants to prove God wrong. But if you place yourself in remembrance and not doubt what God can do and remember that he will do it, then provision is for you. Now, here are the two ways that he said that the provision will come. And not only that, he said, revert, rehearse your victories. Just like I'm telling you today, you're like, well, these weren't your victories. It doesn't matter. When you rehearse victories, period, that God has done, the enemy flees. It says in James 4, when you resist him, when you resist Satan, he flees. So don't just think about it. Think about the victory in your head. No, 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 say it. So I remember I say stuff to Kevin all the time. It might not have been my victory, but it, it does, the enemy backs up from whatever I'm trying to get. I can tell, I can tell people the story about Shonda receiving her car. Y'all have heard it. You've heard it on the thing. Tell people that. It might not be your victory, but tell the victory because in the testimony is the overcoming. In the testimony, you are get, you, the enemy backs up from you. He backs up from your mind 
Because how many have you gone? How many times have you gone to bed at night? Have or have you ever gone to bed at night? And the enemy, enemy will say, "It's never gonna get fixed. The kid is never gonna get any better." Your money is going to continue to be funny. You don't have any money. How are you going to pay your bills? I mean, ha has that ever bombarded your mind at night? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But if you open your mouth and rehearse victories, I don't care whose it is, rehearse the victory, Satan will flee. Because victories are a weapon to the enemy. And it says our weapons are not carnal, but they're strong to, unto God for the pulling down of strongholds. They're strong. So these are the two ways. He said there'll be divine appointments. And there'll be supernatural favor. So these are the two ways that you're supposed to look for the provision. Divine appointments. That means you meet somebody and something happened and divine and supernatural favor. And this is the last thing God said to tell you that if you enter to tell you that you have entered into a time of divine acceleration. Must be burning my throat here. Divine acceleration. God said, I am in the process of turning some things around for you right now. And some of you, there will be things that will be turned around even this week. So look for them. So say that. Say that. Think it's going to turn around. It's going to turn around. It has to turn around. And not only with the turning around, there's provision that's going to come from it because the enemy shouldn't have done it. He shouldn't have brought it to you because you're going to have victory in it. Amen? Amen. So, Father, thank you for th these promises. Thank you, Lord God, for this supernatural provision. Thank you, Lord God, for the turning around. Thank you, Lord God, for supernatural acceleration of the turnaround. Now, Father, I've done as you've asked. I've preached this word to them. So I decree and declare that it will come forth a thousandfold blessing upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen.